Not long ago, an explosion at a hydrogen plant in California damaged and destroyed 60 homes. 60. Well, fast forward a couple of years and we get this. In the meantime, there's been numerous explosions. However, this one just happened recently. A bus exploded not far away from the original scene of the 60 homes which were either damaged or destroyed by the ignition of hydrogen. A lot of people still think that hydrogen is the fuel of the future. Car makers, some of them are fully committed to this idea. They think that it's only a matter of time before hydrogen technology catches up to electric vehicle technology and you'll all be driving hydrogen cars. I've heard that statement from CEOs and leaders in automotive manufacturing businesses many times. However, recently, a bus, a hydrogen powered bus exploded while it was refueling. And a lot of people don't realize this. There's been numerous hydrogen explosions over the past 30 years. One of them, well, it destroyed the Fukushima nuclear reactor in Japan. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. If you've subscribed and you've watched my videos before, you would know. I don't believe hydrogen will work in any way for road transport. Now, yes, in the short term, trucking industry, I can see why some of them are going down that road. But eventually, it won't. It'll be phased out of all road transport altogether, completely. Now, that's my Sam Evans electric Viking prediction. Let me know if you agree or you disagree. There's various reasons why I believe that. One of the key reasons that I believe that is the entire hydrogen network hasn't been built out. But the electric network, it has. Not to mention 95% of electric vehicle charging is done at home. Not to mention it's very, very easy to simply pull out a big battery, and it's already been done now, out of a semi and just put a new one in it. It can be done in less than two minutes. Not to mention battery prices continue to drop while energy density continues to go up whilst solar and wind continue to get cheaper. And that's what powers electric cars. Now, flooding caused by the tsunami in Japan rendered emergency power equipment inoperable, thereby rendering cooling equipment useless. As a result, the water inside the pressure vessels of units one to three evaporated, causing water levels to drop. In conjunction with the drop in water level, fuel rods filled with nuclear fuel, such as uranium, began to become exposed from the water surface. Hydrogen was generated by the chemical reaction between the fuel rods and water vapor. This hydrogen that accumulated inside the reactor buildings and caused hydrogen explosions at units one and three blew off the ceiling and walls of the reactor buildings, causing catastrophic damage to the reactor. And of course, nuclear, basically rendering the entire area a nuclear wasteland. It's gonna take decades before that is changed. At unit four, hydrogen flowed into the reactor building through joint ventilation pipes used to expel air from inside the unit three containment vessel and accumulated in the reactor building where we assume an explosion then occurred. Now, now you can't really say that this explosion at the nuclear power plant in Japan was caused simply by hydrogen. It wasn't. But as you can see, hydrogen played a pretty big part. It also plays a pretty big part in the explosion of nuclear bombs. I'm not really convinced that I personally want to be riding what I think is basically a mini bomb. After seeing this truck blow up, after seeing this bus blow up, and after seeing a number of hydrogen explosions over the last few years, including one in Ohio that killed a number of people, uh, you know, you know, if you want to go on a hydrogen powered bus, then um, I'll just cross my fingers and hope that you're okay. The most recent hydrogen explosion actually happened yesterday. Another explosion in a long litany of hydrogen explosions happened when a bus was engulfed in flames while it was refueling, I guess you could say, in California a couple of days ago. The local bus network operator says that safety mechanisms meant the fire did not spread to primary tanks 
at a new hydrogen fueling station. Now, if that happens, the entire fueling station can explode. And that has happened in the past. In fact, it happened in Norway. The hydrogen buses were being fueled at the time of the fire, Golden Empire Transit Group said in a statement. One bus was destroyed and only the dispensing portion of the hydrogen fueling station was damaged. Explosions were heard and seen from the tanks on the bus that had just been filled, but the primary tanks of the actual fueling station did not ignite due to safety technology, luckily. The Driven says that CEO Karen King said the situation could have been far worse, but credit to the safety mechanisms in place and the swift action of the Bakersfield Fire Department for minimizing the damage. No injuries were reported. King also said it was too soon to know the cause of the fire. The hydrogen bus destroyed in the fire is estimated to have cost 1.1 million US dollars just for a single bus. That's one of the most expensive buses ever made in history. It was one of 10 hydrogen buses purchased by Golden Empire Transit as part of its transition to zero emissions fuels. Now, it's a myth that hydrogen powered anything is zero emission. In fact, it's not zero emission. That's been debunked numerous times within the last few months. If you want to know about that, I'll put a link in the description below. So 1.1 million for each bus, 10 buses cost, well, that's a lot of money. That's $11 million, US dollars for 11 buses. Now, will the other nine buses continue to operate? I don't know, but I don't think there'll be too many passengers willing to uh, get on any of those other nine buses. 100% of new California public transport will be required to be zero emissions by 2040. Golden Empire Transit, which operates in Kern County in Southern California, has constructed a fueling station for the buses, but hasn't provided an estimate on the cost of the fire, which caused damage to parts of the fueling station. There's obviously a lot of debate about whether or not hydrogen will play a big role in transport in the future. But keep in mind, there's electric buses on the roads that have been driving for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kilometers on the same battery packs. That's uh, something a lot of people don't understand. Batteries these days actually last a very, very long time. If you don't believe me, just join the Tesla Mile Club on Facebook. You'll see hundreds of people who have done well in excess of 300,000 plus kilometers on the same battery pack. And that's using old technology, not LFP. Lithium ion phosphate batteries last even longer. Keep in mind as well, I've heard of people removing the batteries from buses when they reach the end of their life, when the bus reaches the end of its life, then using those batteries because they're still good to power their entire homes, big homes. So as you can see, I'm a big proponent of renewable transport, electric renewable transport, not hydrogen. Now, it's worth keeping in mind, yes, there's quite a few refueling stations in California, but across the rest of America, they're almost non-existent. There's a couple in Europe, but not that many there either. In Australia, there's, I think, two, but they're not actually usable to most of the general public. A lot of investment, and I mean billions and billions of dollars will need to go into a hydrogen refueling network if this was to really take off. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it'll work? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.